Being so strong and will-powered was a blessing and a curse for Osi at the same time. She had to witness the deaths of her brother, father, and child, and the presumed suicide of her husband. Living with her mother and aunties could have been a consolation to all her troubles, but there lay the root of them all. So what did they do to her? And was her pain finally over? Hello, and welcome to another video. Today, we'll tell you about a woman who was killed so her family could collect insurance money. As always, we would appreciate it if you would give this video a like, subscribe, and ensure that the notification bell is turned on for more in-depth real crime sagas like this. Without further ado, let's get started. In September 1885, O.C. Sneed was born in New York City as Oceana Wardlaw Martin. Her mother, Caroline Bell Wardlaw, was a member of the Southern aristocracy. Her father, Colonel Robert Maxwell Martin, served in the Confederate Army. Osi's brother was Hugh Martin. When Osi was three, Hugh, then seven years old, had a terrible fall down the stairs. Sadly, as a result of his wounds, the young boy tragically lost his life. Hugh's death brought Osi's family $22,000 from the life insurance policy that they'd taken out on him. On January 9, 1901, neighbors reported a tremendous smashing sound coming from Osi's residence. They hurried over and discovered that Osi's father was dead on the floor. While Osi wept in the background, Mrs. Martin huddled over his body. After Robert passed away, Caroline received $10,000 from his life insurance policy and moved Osi in with her family down south. Caroline, Osi's mother, had two younger sisters, Mary and Virginia. None of the three women could bear to be apart from the other two. Each one of them had graduated with a teaching degree from Wesleyan College for Women. Oceana Seaborn Goodall Pollock, their aunt, founded and served as president of Montgomery Female College in Christiansburg, Virginia, until she passed away at the age of 93. Since Oceana was getting on in years, she made the tough decision to hand over the reins of the school and her position to her niece, Virginia. Almost immediately, Mary Wardlaw followed in Virginia's footsteps. Then Caroline came. Before Caroline arrived, the school was thriving. Caroline brought O.C. to Christiansburg after a brief break in New York. Caroline quickly assumed the role of the school principal. Caroline had pleaded with her nephew, Fletcher, to abandon his family in Linville so that he might take a role in the school. While at first, Fletcher was resistant, Caroline was eventually able to win him over. Caroline refused to let Vashti, his wife, visit, leading to the breakup of the marriage. The sisters were devastated when they learned of the romantic involvement between Fletcher and O.C. Seeing this, the couple moved to New York. Upon the Montgomery School's demise, the sisters swiftly made peace with Fletcher and O.C. and relocated to their home. Four of O.C.'s policies totaled $24,500 by 1903. Fletcher's mother and two aunts were identified as beneficiaries of his $24,000 life insurance policy. In Osi's case, her maternal grandmother was named as the primary beneficiary of her plans, with her mother listed as the secondary beneficiary. Osi bought life insurance policies, not realizing that they would seal her fate for a short and lonely existence at the hands of her own relatives. In the Flatland section of Brooklyn, the three sisters, O.C. and Fletcher, lived in a tiny tenement at 1693 East 48th Street. There was no money coming in, and the family's resources were dwindling fast. Sooner than expected, O.C. learned that she was pregnant. The joy of O.C.'s baby girl, Mary Alberta Sneed, was cut short after her little lifespan ended after just two days. By the fall, O.C. was expecting again. During the early stages of her pregnancy, Fletcher mysteriously disappeared, suggesting that he had included that his life was not worth as much as his death. According to the note he supposedly left behind, he attempted suicide. O.C. was told by her family 
that Fletcher had taken his own life. Each of the three sisters made an effort to cash in on Fletcher's insurance policy. Since there was no evidence that Fletcher was dead, the issuing agency refused to pay the full amount. On July 18, 1910, O.C. gave birth to a frail son and named him David Pollock Sneed. This was because of the starvation she suffered from her family. O.C. told Ethel, her next-door neighbor, that her mother and aunts were trying to starve her to death. O.C. was given morphine whenever the sisters detected signs of anxiety or suspicion so that she would be quiet again. For legal counsel on September 9, 1909, Virginia went to see Julian V. Varaba in Brooklyn. Virginia begged him to change the will of her ailing niece. For this reason, Virginia gave him permission to drop by the house and directly solicit O.C.'s approval. Julian met O.C. lying in a room of the house. O.C. appeared to be in a coma and was as lifeless as a corpse. When the sisters left the room briefly, she immediately offered Julian her will and requested him to save her and her son. Julian slipped the will into his pocket as the sisters approached. They gave him two of O.C.'s insurance policies for a total of $7,000 in exchange for one simple favor, shift O.C.'s old grandmother's beneficiary to them. Julian had no intention of doing anything like that, but he went through with it to save O.C.'s life. They discovered that, while the policies were lawful, they needed the approval of the current beneficiary to amend them because O.C. was not in a position to make such a decision. The sisters would never ask their mother to give up her privileges. Julian, thankfully, was freed. Mary and Caroline abruptly decided to relocate to a Manhattan hotel in early November. They had just sent infant David to St. Christopher's Hospital for treatment, despite O.C.'s disapproval. In East Orange, New Jersey, Virginia rented a house. Virginia informed O.C. and Mary that they would be trying out the new residence. Caroline and Mary would join them if they liked it. However, things didn't go as planned as Virginia called Dr. Herbert Simmons, deputy county physician, at 4.30 p.m. on November 29, 1909, and asked him to come to her home at 89 West 14th Street. Virginia revealed that a woman had committed suicide in the bathtub. When Dr. Simmons arrived at the house, he discovered O.C. dead in the bathtub full of water. Dr. Simmons also discovered a suicide note that he didn't believe O.C. had written before leaving the house and promptly called the police. On the day that O.C. died, neighbors reported seeing O.C.'s mother, Caroline Martin, enter the house and stay for several hours before leaving. Detective O'Neill, who was assigned to the case, was persuaded that Caroline, Virginia, and Mary starved O.C. and administered morphine to her. Caroline, or Virginia, he suspected, overdosed O.C. and put her thin body into the bathtub to drown. Physician William McKenzie confirmed that O.C. drowned and had a lethal level of morphine in her system. He also mentioned that she would have died otherwise from advanced starvation. She had been dead in that bathtub for at least 24 hours before the police were called. Virginia remained firm in her claim. She hadn't seen O.C. since the morning of her death. Not even the need to use the house's lone bathroom compelled her to make the walk upstairs that day. She also claimed to have no idea where her sisters were. William Kingsley, a handwriting expert, examined the claimed suicide note. He concluded that the body was written with one pen and the signature with another. However, there was no pen or ink in the house. Meanwhile, Fletcher Sneed, who had allegedly committed suicide, was discovered in Ontario, Canada. Fletcher was working as a dishwasher under the alias John Lucas. He remained free because the police did not extradite him. O.C.'s aunts and her mother, Caroline, were arrested and imprisoned for O.C.'s murder on December 16, 1909. All three were eventually accused, and Caroline would stand trial for the deliberate murder of her daughter, O.C. Sneed. The other two were charged with first-degree murder and attempted to persuade O.C. into committing suicide. Nemesis caught up with the Wardlaw sisters as Virginia succeeded in starving herself to death on August 11, 1910. 
Caroline began acting strangely after Virginia died. Caroline was allowed to stand trial with Mary after a committee of psychiatrists agreed. Caroline pleaded guilty to involuntary manslaughter on January 9, 1911. Caroline thought the judge's punishment of seven years in prison was too harsh. Mary, the final sister, evaded all punishment. Mary couldn't have been an accomplice before the fact because Caroline was convicted of manslaughter rather than murder. Mary was a free woman. Caroline went insane not too long after her conviction. She died on June 21st, 1913, after spending two years in an insane asylum in Trenton, New Jersey. O.C. Sneed was laid to rest among her father and two children in Mount Hope Cemetery in Westchester, New York. Fletcher Sneed spent the majority of his time in Los Angeles, California. Mary, his mother, relocated to Oakland, California. Both Mary and Fletcher were adamant that Virginia and Caroline were not guilty. Were they trying to cover up for all the wicked acts of the sisters, or were they saying the truth? Be the judge in the comment section below. Let us know what you think. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.